The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And as always, it doesn't matter where or where I'm at or you're at. You could be on the moon. As long as we're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we were down a little earlier um, we're at kind of the low end of uh, what options were predicting, which is this range around uh, SPY 385 to 390. We're a little, little lower than that, but not badly. Certainly on the S&P cash, uh, 3850 is starting to look like uh, quite the magnet. Uh, as we started talking about uh, on uh, Monday, uh, that uh, is probably time to hurry up and wait a lot. I think the market's on a on average is just a little bit bearish, but not enough for me to go out uh, chasing uh, unicorns and rainbows out there for uh, being long or uh, uh, yelling about the end of the uh, world one more time. If you're bearish, uh, I think it's all about CPI numbers and. Uh, we're going to move off that. Then we're going to hurry up and wait and look for earnings on Thursday. But I think past that, uh, we're going to make some kind of determination in the market uh, as a whole, as a uh, collective bunch. Uh, Jesse Livermore talked about the composite man uh, on Wall Street, which is kind of the idea of finding out where the, where the average Joe was uh, pushing markets up and down. Uh, not so much on the retail business because back then it was, it wasn't hedge funds and all that stuff. It was very a handful of very rich guys and then a bunch of people thinking that they could outfox them. And uh, eh, most of them did not. Anyway, uh, volume shrank yesterday, which was a bit bullish as we came down. Uh, on the opposite side, we don't have a lot of people uh, buying out-of-the-money puts to the downside, at least in the S&P 500, uh, not buying out-of-the-monies anyway. And so that's uh, kind of bearish because that means that risk is a bit uh, wider down there because you don't have natural folks uh, generally willing to buy any kind of huge downturn in the market. So it's uh, kind of six of one or half a dozen, or as uh, Steve Rhodes likes to say, his uh, proverbial mixed bag. Uh, and uh, wasn't there a company called Bag Full of Nuts? Oh, I think it was Chocked Full of Nuts. Uh, anyway, uh, wherever you and whatever you do with your bag uh, is a uh, personal decision, but uh, I understand that there are ointments and lotions for all that. Uh, but, uh, you know, what I'm going to do is just continue to grind out here and wait for that big, fat, juicy pitch uh, that goes in the left field bleachers. But today, volume again, lower. We're only doing about a little over 6 billion shares as we start, once again, an excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And uh, for all that, we're going to go through a lot of charts. A lot of times, the money you make tomorrow... It's going to be really earned today by looking at charts. So not a good day to run away. I kind of, kind of, yeah, a little sanguine yesterday. But uh, now business is getting ready to pick up, and it's time for everybody to start paying attention to what's going on in the markets because uh, the next two days should be very juicy, uh, as we like to say. 877-927-6648. And what else do we have here? Eh, kind of about it at the moment. Uh, go back and look at the indexes real quick. 
Eh, we're down three and a half points on the S&P cash. No big deal down 12 on the NASDAQ, up 67 on the Dow. Russell's up uh, nine. And, of course, uh, everybody talking about gold a little bit. Certainly crude fell off the edge of the earth. I wasn't paying it close enough to it. Um, but uh, maybe finally some of that Russian oil uh, is making its way back into the market. And, of course, uh, a big deal with the uh, Saudi just to start pumping oil. So maybe that's finally starting to have an effect. Uh, but uh, I do digress. Let's do a little history and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1990, Nintendo releases the original fantasy Final Fantasy, excuse me, video from its Nintendo Entertainment System in North America. One of the most successful role-playing games uh, for NES, uh, Final Fantasy, helped popularize the genre, which has gone to spawn on one of the most well-known RPG, that's uh, uh, something, role-playing games. Franchises in history, ironic, uh, or ironically, he said, the game's creator, uh, Sakaguchi, Sakaguchi, excuse me, Sakaguchi, uh, thought the game would be his last one, and uh, he was going to go back to recording music and trying to make it that way. Hence the name Final in Final Fantasy. And uh, had the game not gone so well, he would have quit making games, gone back to college, and uh, tried to make an earning uh, with his daddy's pull cue. You probably like that song from Rod Stewart. So much uh, for that. And, of course, uh, he's gone on to make his own, uh, basically, production house. He's made a bunch of games over the year. Uh, after the success uh, and uh, him leaving uh, in, uh, Nintendo, uh, they went. he went on to uh, really kind of self-retire uh, in Hawaii. But uh, still keeps up um, basically being a director of bringing new games. You haven't heard a lot from him probably for the last 8, 10 years, mostly because he focuses on uh, games for uh, smartphones and doesn't do that much in the game category, in the big game category anymore. Many of the other bigger companies, much bigger than Nintendo, like uh, Electronic Arts and Activision and those companies have become giant monsters. And uh, he makes uh, smaller but uh, highly profitable games. Uh, and uh, most of the production's done in Japan, uh, but the office uh, and uh, corporate headquarters are in Hawaii. He's got some fairly tough digs. Anyway, as we come back, low volume, uh, once again as we pushed lower, uh, in the absence of any data, that would say we're bullish. Uh, as I said below, I'm kind of worried that we don't have a lot of downside uh, buyers out there, which are generally uh, bearish, especially if you get some kind of surprise. But uh, that's it. I'm kind of maybe we got the, the low end today. Hard to tell. Going to need to really wait for those numbers and see how they react. 877-927-6648. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. This the gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. As we return, a uh, question from last night uh, via. Uh, the Discord private messaging system. Uh, Ryan Holdings, uh, which uh, is involved in the insurance business, uh, but uh, you got kind of a Gartley pattern out here, but it's about um, really kind of uh, symmetrical. You want to see, you know, not near the retracement to the B point that you saw in this one. So there is something there, but no, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, I like them um, a little bit more uh, ABC-ish instead of uh, huge uh, swings in it. Um, I think the question on this one was uh, with all the huge short interest. It has about 10 days to cover. So there is a great deal on this. Energy, though, is good on the way up, 2.2. When you look at the big leg down, uh, from Ryan Specialty Holdings, April 21st uh, down to May 12th, about the same thing. Uh, there was uh, there was about 15% more energy on the way up on this leg to uh, today, and yet another high. So yeah, there's kind of that. Uh, another comment in the den about uh, uh, the nice move in natural gas. Um, uh, and some of these other ones, there's almost always a big hedge between natural gas and crude. And over the time, you'll be able to see uh, that there's almost always a hedge, uh, a hair, a pair's hedge one way on one side or the other. So if you ever see any big moves in natural gas or in uh, crude, that tends to uh, be just the opposite on natural gas, but uh, eh, it looks like everybody took an opportunity to sell anyway in natural gas, which doesn't tell you <clears throat> that the, that is all that great. Uh, GLD, of course, uh, still languishing out here. Hard to get uh, too excited uh, in this one. Maybe something happens, maybe it doesn't, but uh, uh, the uh, proverbial pot that does not boil uh, as you watch it, um, 
gold down about six bucks at uh, 1725. You really needed to see support come in at about 1775 that were 50 bucks lower than that. Does not connote uh, an easy V bottom out here on any of this. Uh, crude's off seven dollars and 77 cents at 96.32. Uh, and what else do we have? Okay. Uh, what else? Okay. Oh, yeah. They pointed out in the DIN um, some of the aviation stocks uh, doing well today. Of course, anytime jet fuel comes down, uh, they almost always have jet fuel uh, hedged out for six months to a year. And we're getting to that point now where it's actually truly going to hurt. Uh, airlines and uh, other uh, companies like she put down here, Jets, which I think is NetJets. We have a nice day, but anytime uh, that's uh, 80% of the expense of an airline ticket is fuel. The 20% pays for folks and planes and everything else, but 80% always goes is part of the, is that part is what it costs. Uh, to uh, pay for the fuel. When prices go up, that uh, 80% is most of it. Uh, but you have a nice move in this one through the double gap today, which is kind of a big sign out here. Uh, to, to see what else we have. To do. Uh, uh, take a quick look at Jets. Uh, U, uh, U.S. Global Jets. Oh, this is the ETF. Hey, you got the same thing out here. Of course, everybody wanting to go back and go and go travel after the pandemic. Uh, but that's it. Uh, question about Apple. I did have uh, an options chart in yesterday's newsletter, and yeah, it looked like uh, 150 kind of on the high side of this, and 145 on the low. So did make the low yesterday. Now probably going to go try to take out or get to the highs. But I don't think there's a lot of juice. 150 is uh, on that for expiration on Friday. Don't have a lot. Uh, question about uh, Twitter. Uh, T-R-T-W, right? T-R-T-W. Uh, what is it? Let me go back up here to the email. Uh, TW, if you could type, TW, TR, if I could type. Come on, there we go. That's not even it either. How did that get that? TW, TR, if he could type. There he goes. He typed it. Okay. Uh, Twitter, uh, testing a previous low. Uh, you blew through a lot of that volume yesterday. Uh, I had several people ask me about what's going to happen with uh, him and uh, uh, with uh, Musk and uh, Twitter and all the lawsuits. Yeah, he'll end up doing something like giving him $250 million. But, um, you know, he did it and was going to move the uh, operation to Texas. So everything he did, and it was in Texas. If there's going to be any lawsuit, it's going to be in Texas. Uh, this is not going to be a uh, kangaroo court like most things when you go to sue uh, in Silicon Valley where they just get the uh, nod from all the judges who uh, know where their uh, butter is uh, or their bread is buttered. Uh, but uh, almost all this stuff is uh, put together uh, before they ever open the books and let him see uh, into it and uh, – yeah, they can all make a lot of noise and yell and scream, and maybe somebody's going to go to jail. But it's a lot of crap. These guys don't know anything. And uh, I, it's rare that you see David Faber go shooting off his mouth. But, uh, you yeah, uh, know, when a media makes you, they can break you. And at this point, uh, when uh, he didn't want to follow the narrative of the great uh, industrial complex, uh, of the media, he is now on the outs. I told you for a long time that, uh, you know, I think it's a 40 or $60 a 
company for Tesla. I'd much rather have SpaceX or some of the other ventures he's in. This is probably a $100 company if run correctly. Uh, we know that uh, Twitter is run by a bunch of bozos who really aren't in it for the money. And uh, one of the reasons they had to take the offer is they would have had to come out and say they had some kind of plan for actually making money with this uh, piece of dog doo-doo, but that's it. Yeah, I mean, these uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, at best – are uh, engines for making narcissists out of most people. So I'm not a big fan of social media. Uh, it's been used for incredible evil, like the uh, Facebook or Metamucil, whatever you want to call it today. But, uh, you know, you had a lot of volume yesterday. Don't look for an easy bounce and don't look for must to actually have to cough up much money. Uh, uh, much uh, ado about nothing. We'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, a lot of discussion in the den about uh, what's going to happen to, uh, to uh, Musk, but that's why they had a contract up front with a breakup fee. It doesn't matter why he wants to break up. They can ask for the billion, and in 20 years, maybe they'll get it, or maybe he'll settle for $200 million or $500 million and they'll be happy. Uh, and uh, I don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, regret for most of the people that either worked at Twitter or that ran Twitter, as they were almost all universally bozos. Uh, and uh, used their power for evil, uh, where uh, Facebook tends, the evil tends to be kind of concentrated at the high end of the company. The evil with Twitter kind of uh, ran all the way to the bone. 
as far as I could tell. When you find out just how many horrible things those folks did to people over the years. And, uh, yeah, when you decide to be a kind of a censor, uh, you're pretty low on my book already. 877-927-6648. Yeah, karma. <laughs> Yeah, it's something when you have a public company and you don't worry about making money. And then, uh, what do they say that call chutzpah? And that's when uh, you uh, tell the judge you're a orphan, but you're accused of uh, killing your parents. That's the kind of chutzpah that they have. Uh, anyway, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, but, yeah, anybody that's never uh, been in court uh, uh, for uh, corporate uh, issues uh, probably doesn't uh, even uh, have any idea of how all that stuff works. But that's why there was a, an agreement uh, before about uh, not following through. It's called a breakup agreement. Everybody does it. And uh, somehow they're going to ask for extra money or make him buy it and all this other stuff. Um, just a, I, I've never heard so many nitwits in my life. Uh, well, that's not true. There are still just a ton of nitwits, aren't they? Okay, so let's go back here and take a look at some of the other stuff. Uh, take a look, a quick look at Netflix. Um, again, uh, there's too much content, too much production going on. Still 600 plus uh uh, scripted shows in English in Hollywood being made now. Again, you couldn't even start to watch them all. Um, some of the ones that are coming out, uh, like the uh, latest Star Wars one and some of the others, have just been horrifically bad, at least in my opinion. And certainly uh, for the hours watched, um, Many of those shows have not been there. Uh, the exception is that you actually get something like a Sopranos. Um, it's not the rule. Generally, you get something that maybe runs three or four or five years. And if it's not really good, if you're really lucky, you get a 9 p.m. time or 10 p.m. time on Friday or Saturday nights. And those television shows can run for 10 years. No one's expecting them to actually make a lot of money. Uh, they're just there to fill up the dead air, so they make them at a price. But you'll always find uh, C uh, NCIS Poughkeepsie uh, or, uh, or uh, Hawaii Five-0 or uh, huge amounts of retread TV shows on Friday, Saturday nights in those hours when everybody's watching uh, Netflix or HBO or something else. Um, there's just not that much talent, and uh, as we've seen, there's uh, too much groupthink in both Silicon Valley and Hollywood, and that tends to make uh, everybody make the exact same thing till everybody's so sick of it they don't want to watch it anymore. So, yeah, all the fantasy stuff and the Marvel and the thing, I'm way wondering when the big uh, comic book crash comes uh, in this sector. I don't know if it'll hurt. Eh, probably not going to hurt Netflix as much as it would hit, hurt uh, certainly uh, Disney. But uh, eh, I do digress. But uh, not a lot happening out here in these lows. But what you have is a nice little pattern out here with, for the most part, uh, lower highs and higher lows. So you've gone, you've got a nice amount of consolidation in Netflix uh, that really goes back to uh, about mid-May. And, you know, this could continue on, but generally what happens with these is that they'll break out one way or the other. That'll be about 80% of the time of a head fake, and it'll be awfully hard to either short it or go, go long the thing. But, uh, you know, just the fundamental backdrop is way too much... Uh, production, way too much cost, and uh, too many shows that they are uh, paying for uh, that uh, no one's watching. Um, there was uh, one that had a political couple on that was probably nothing more than a thinly veiled payoff uh, that Netflix had for a couple of years, uh, and it was the absolute lowest rated show that they had on. And so... 
you know, how long can you be able to just throw money away? Well, when things are good, uh, pretty well, uh, when things are bad, as uh, Warren Buffett says, you can only tell when uh, who's swimming without bathing suits when the tide goes out. Well, the tide's gone out for Disney and Netflix and the rest of these folks. Uh, question to look at uh, Meta, Musil. Uh, don't see a lot different out here. The only good thing is you did make a lower low with lighter volume back on June 23rd. Now you're just starting to base out. Um, still makes a lot of money, not going out of business tomorrow. But uh, no, I've never had a face account, a Facebook account. And I think we had Twitter for about two months here at TFNN. And there were about 20 things that made it horrible for us to actually use. Um, and we never used it again. And that was the last time I used it. So no. Haven't been using it. 877-927-6648. Uh, <laughs> yeah, none of this stuff. All of it's horrible to one uh, one extent or another. Okay. Uh, question on Workday. Um, all these look fairly good. They just need to bottom out before you do anything. But uh, you had 6 million shares for Workday on 134.53. You got about half that volume. You started to bounce. You're coming back into it. You got about 1.9 million shares today. But, uh, yeah, it's all about the CPI numbers and then earnings after that. So we're going to have about a, two more days of holding your breath, uh, probably for a little bit tomorrow should have some nice movement then we're going to go right back into waiting and seeing what the big boys of the street are going to do for their earnings okay so that's one what else do we have out here can i look at the smh's yes i can smh we'll do that too <laughs> uh you know you just got to bounce i mean the nice thing is that you did jump as Wyckoff would say, jump the creek uh, back on this double gap, but you're really no follow through. Uh, the opposite side of that parable for uh, jumping the creek is probably the IBD where you got four or five days before you get, uh, you better have uh, some continuation and a sign of strength. And all you got is sideways on that. But uh, I would like one more push kind of down in the low 3,800s with no volume. Maybe today was enough. But I'd like to get one more day down, maybe on some bad news in the next couple of days. And all the volume to shrink and set these up for uh, ABCs. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Paper White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And uh, interestingly enough, we got a question out here that's a little bit in my wheelhouse. Um, and that is, uh, do you know how long planes get parked in the desert? Why aren't they sold to third world countries instead of letting them uh, just rot there and going to use, uh, going to use them again? Uh, there's a few things. Uh, as I talked about at the top of the show, 80% of the cost of operating one of those is fuel. So if you get one that uh, is 5% more fuel efficient, suddenly it costs a great deal more to fly an older plane. And for a variety of reasons, uh, jet engines and the planes have been getting uh, incredibly better. Each uh, version uh, Boeing pops out is another 10 or 15% gas efficient. Uh, they're using maybe 40, 45% of the fuel that they used in 1980 on these planes. So it, that is a huge amount when it comes to the bottom line. So why do they park the planes out there? One, um, a lot of times they're leased, uh, and uh, they don't tend to sell them to third world countries for the exact same reason. They have to pay for fuel, too, and generally more than we pay here in the United States. So fuel economy is uh, paramount in all those things and why uh, even why everybody's kind of bad-mouthing Boeing that their future looks great as long as they can build planes uh, and put engines on them that do better than the last versions of the planes uh, and previous and if there's a big enough move or percentage then you know what they just adopt that plane and uh, over a number of 10 or 15 years uh, you'll have a ton of them at a particular airline but uh, both uh, Boeing and Airbus have uh, made huge strides uh, in, uh, you know, comfort and look. But the big thing uh, that uh, executives at airlines want to know is uh, how fuel efficient is it? Because that's it. 80 percent. 80 percent of almost always is fuel. And if you can knock that down to 75 or 80 percent, that's five thousand dollars for every plane that takes off, or ten thousand dollars for every takeoff. Or in some cases, one plane I saw was going to be seventy-five thousand dollars cheaper than the plane it replaced. Um, so that's you know you just take seventy-five grand and put it in your pocket, Mister Airline. Uh, so. What happens is uh, almost everybody leases the planes. So when they go out there, they belong to the leasing company. And they make out. So it's not a problem. But unless say, someone needs a part for it uh, and it's still flying at uh, some of the other airlines, I mean, a lot of times uh, most of the savings for these planes are at altitude. So if we're talking about using these planes, they tend to go to smaller regional carriers where they don't ever uh, get up to 40,000 or 42,000 feet or something. If you're never getting above 25,000 feet, 
you're not going to really save that much fuel. So the regionals will start to use them, and then, of course, uh, they'll just buy parts off the ones out there. And eventually, no one buys the parts anymore, and they uh, turn them into pop cans. But that's it. But, yeah, even third-world countries have to pay for fuel, and it doesn't make them any cheaper uh, to run. So, you know, if you're going to buy one for yourself, like uh, – uh, you're, uh, you know, you use it 15 times a year. That's one thing. But if you're taking off and landing eight times a day, as many of these planes do, or six times a day, um, with regional routes, uh, that is a lot of fuel and a lot of savings for each one of those legs. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, two. Uh, yeah, there isn't a lot of discounting rates unless you're on discounting airlines, uh, and even those are fairly expensive. Uh, okay. Uh, Do we look at Tesla? I don't think we did. Uh, yeah, again, higher interest rates make very expensive cars very expensive to buy. And I don't think this changes much of anything out here. Uh, you fail to make really a lower low. You fail to make even a higher high. Uh, so there's just a lot of these stocks that are in these contracting, uh, constricting triangle patterns. And eventually they're going to break out one way or the other. And when they do, like I said, 80% of the time, uh, it's going to be the opposite side of that after the first day or two uh, that rules over the time. But generally, these tend to break out uh, and do a head fake before they do anything else. Uh, okay. Do I see anything else in options? No, everybody's just kind of hovering around these areas. Uh, as I said, kind of a little weaker than I thought. This is kind of on the like on the south side of it, but uh, probably just a lot of people waiting, and so there aren't a lot of buyers wanting to get in front of uh, everything else. Question about real estate and DLR from John. Uh, it's down a little bit. Digital Realty, of course, these guys uh, have a lot of. Uh, places uh, that uh, they lease out for uh, data warehouses and uh, data farms and data, 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 just uh, a lot of places where everybody keeps their computers. Um, actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it might. Uh, 120 bucks held up better than most of the other real estate in the uh, world and REITs, but uh, interesting REIT out there. But uh, I think if I remember right, uh, we saw that, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now, went short uh, DLR. Uh, what is the cost of aviation kerosene? Uh, it depends on what you're talking about, but it's called JP4 and JP, eh, almost all of them use JP4, uh, which is a slightly more refined version of kerosene. It's not kerosene. It's close. Uh, with some additives in it to keep it from blowing up. But uh, that it. <laughs> uh, what's the cost of aviation kerosene? Uh, now it's about six bucks a gallon. But uh, it was uh, about uh, two and a quarter a year and a half ago. So it's very expensive. Okay. But maybe that's come down a little bit, and, and hence the bounce of uh, that. A uh, great deal. The United States is one of the few countries that actually has leaded gas still for airplanes. Almost uh, the rest of the world, uh, getting gasoline is almost unheard of. Getting uh, uh, av gas gasoline is, is impossible. Uh, you've got to really uh, plan your trips in the rest of the world. Uh, almost everybody else has diesel. And uh, there's a bunch of uh, smaller planes that uh, are actually uh, using uh, Mercedes diesel's engines from their cars and equipping them so that they can run on jet fuel. Um, 
it's a, a bunch of them like that. But whether it's turbine or uh, piston, uh, jet fuel, aviation fuel is expended. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. question from Dusty. I think uh, Dusty is not always his name or her. Uh, wants to look at the dust, the uh, 2X uh, bear in gold. Um, certainly had a good low out here. And I'm not a big fan of being short gold unless I can use options on it. Uh, but you had a good sign down here on March 8th. Uh, just a hair under 11 bucks with 7 million shares. Uh, dipped under that on April 18th with 3.7 million shares. So eh, not quite half, but fairly close, which is pretty big on an ETF. Now you're back up into previous highs. You spiked it with 3 million compared to 2 million on January 28th. That was just four or five days ago. And now uh, it really looks like you're going to want to go uh, in the 2420 and 2526. So I think you got a little bit longer to go, but I'd certainly like to see if you were thinking about going long gold, I'd certainly like to uh, uh, see those retested on a light, lot lighter volume. 
but certainly three million shares and you had that so you may get a little bit more um if i was long dust i'd probably uh wherever i bought it i probably would be thinking about checking out now seems the risk is uh uh fairly large the uh the horse is fairly long in the tooth uh so uh i can't really say that there's a whole lot out here that makes me uh think that uh, you'd want to be long this and it's not giving a good signal or much of a signal to say that gold is bottomed either but i'd watch it close same volume as the previous one uh another buck would probably be really good if you could get up there and no volume came in then you could look at the opposite side and maybe think about going long so when you can not when you have to we will return like a bad rash tomorrow Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.